Hello and welcome to our first flipped classroom event. So you will have a whole bunch of code that I have distributed to you and that in this video I will go over in advance so you can get familiar with the code before you actually have to program it in class, definitely to your advantage. So I'm going to start with the layouts, which you actually don't have to change. And I'm going to start with what we call the second layout, which is actually the guessing the number game. What we're going to do is we're going to play a game where you guess a number. So you guess the number, shows you how many guesses, shows you what your max possible score is. You type a number into here and you hit guess. And you're given some feedback as to whether your guess is too high, too low, or correct. And then you continue to guess. And you're, the more guesses you do, the lower your score gets. This is a fairly standard layout. And you can take a look at what we did. All of this should be familiar to you. So the actual uh, first screen is going to look a little strange, especially in the preview, because it has a list view, which we haven't talked about yet, and we will talk about it next week, but we're actually going to use it here. And so we have high scores, which is just a... <coughs> piece of text and then we have a list of scores and then at the bottom we have a way for you to write your name and start playing the game so you type your name in here and when you hit play you get moved to that screen where you can actually play the game then when the game finishes you come back here and your name goes up on the high score list so let's start easy with what a score is because a score is very straightforward it implements this interface called serializable. Serializable means you can take this in-memory object and turn it into a sequence of bytes that's appropriate to be written onto the network or into storage. In this case, we have a very simple class which just has a string and an integer. You create it with a string and an integer and you can get a string and an integer. So there really isn't very much to the score class and you don't have to change it. If we look at where we start, we have uh, an app compat activity, which has a list of scores that we call our high score list. And on create, we do sort of the standard things. We call our super, we set the content view. We also set up our toolbar. And then we create a, a high score list. And you know I populated it with some scores. And then uh, there's this call to render high scores, which actually puts it into the list view. And I'm going to show you that code, but you're not sort of responsible for changing it. Um, yeah, you've got your, your menu here um, and on create options menu and the menu is nothing special. We have settings and an exit. Okay, going back here on options item selected uh, for settings, we're not going to do anything. And for exit, we're going to exit the application. And so again, all stuff that you've seen. Uh, here's an add high score function. I'm not going to go over it, but it's fairly straightforward. It inserts your score in sorted order. There's probably a more API heavy way to do this. When you insert a high score, at the end you render the high scores to update the list. And this is where we're doing, <coughs> excuse me, our list, uh, our list view. We're basically collecting a bunch of strings in this loop. And then we're doing this thing where a list view has an array adapter. In this case, an array adapter of type string. You grab the list view and set the adapter. And that's actually all you have to do for a simple list view. So here we just have a bunch of strings and um, 
we're putting them in a list view. The strings consist of a name and a score. Okay, so all of this so far is code that you can look at, but you don't have to change any of it. Now here gets uh, starts the code that you actually do have to change. So first of all, everything you have to change is marked with this triple X. When play button is pressed, you're going to get this name field. You're going to check to see if it's empty. And if it's empty, you want to send a toast. Hopefully this will be straightforward. And in fact, in some of the code we gave you, we actually show you how to send a toast, even if you have trouble typing into Google, how do I send a toast in Android, which would also show you how to send a toast. So this part, is, it's not a trick, it's sort of an easy thing to get you going. And then this part is where you're actually doing an, an explicit intent. So you're launching the game activity and you're going to have to pass it some data. And that you're going to have to think about a little bit. An acti on activity result is how you're going to get the result from the game, which is going to include some data like the actual score. And exactly how you want to do this is up to you, but these are the parts that you need to write. And they're going to be very similar to the explicit intent demo that I did in class. So here's the uh, game logic. We have a little bit more going on, most of which you don't have to worry about. Here's some example of how to actually send a toast and if you want to know why we abstract this into a function here, why bother? It's because in the game it's possible to have overlapping toasts and by putting them in this function we can uh, easily sort of morph from a toast that says too high to a toast that says too low uh, without you wondering why you've clicked guess and the toast isn't changing because toasts just sort of hang around for a particular length of time. Long is three and a half seconds, short is two seconds. So in onCreate uh, for the game, you're going to have to write some code here where you're going to deal with uh, incoming data. And you only need to write the beginning. Everything past this point is correct and I would leave as is. So we're initializing some of the data structures here figuring out what the actual answer is, and then checking to see if you're this master user, Cody, who we use for debugging. There's a bunch of game logic, which I encourage you to take a look at. There's some interesting things here, like how to parse an integer using a static method from the integer class, but nothing... Uh, terribly interesting until we get here and this is uh, this is a bit of a mind bender so what we're doing here is we are telling the main thread to post so we are posting an event to the main thread uh, what's the main thread the main thread is um, the program that is updating the user interface and we're saying hey after 2000 milliseconds which is two seconds I want you to run this runnable and this runnable uh, is uh, this routine correct so in the logic here if your answer is too low you get a toast that says too low if your answer is too high you get a toast that says too high and if you're correct what you get is a toast that says correct and two seconds later it's going to call this function. The reason we're doing this is because we want to give the user some feedback that they actually chose the correct value so we're going to sort of leave it on the screen for a little while but then we don't want the user to have to click or do anything else and so in two seconds this function is going to run. This does mean that we don't, once you've guess the correct answer if you correct if you guess another answer you've already won and you will still be taken back to the original screen okay and this is what the code actually looks like so uh, this um, handler we're going to get a handler uh, we're going to post delay this runnable object to it and the handler is a, a global all right here we have uh, 
um, the logic to compute the score and hmm, seems like we have two copies of that well maybe I'll clean it up before I give that out and um, yeah I don't think I I don't think I need both versions of that and then there's this function called correct which gets called when the user guesses the value correctly and I'll, you know, I'll give you a hint but at the at the end well it's not a hint but the the specification of correct is it should end this activity and return the score value back to the activity that called it and that's it so if we take a look at how this thing looks when we start it is going to look like this. It's the FC intent game, flipped classroom intent. We have our uh, menu up here. We have a bunch of students, which we can actually click, but it doesn't do anything. And when you start, if you write your name in here and click play, nothing's going to happen. This play button is not hooked up. Eventually, you will get things running. I'll just give you a taste of what that looks like here, although I'm not leaking anything in terms of the actual code. I think this is updated. Let's see. Can we be Fred? No, not yet. Oh, Gradle builds running. <coughs> so we can listen to the fan in my laptop uh, and there are also fans behind me because I have a bunch of discs that have fans that I didn't think were super noisy but they they sure show up a lot on these recordings all right here we go our Gradle build has run and we are updating thought that'd be a little faster all right my name isn't actually Fred but not Flintstone either, but we're going to guess the number, uh, 55, too high, 44, too high, 33, too high, 22, too low, 26, 25, Oh, correct. So Fred Flintstone here got 936. Exactly how the score is generated. Uh, that was something Cody came up with last year. and It's some exponential function that's weird. So you can take a look at that if you care to. We're concerned about the activity logic, not the score logic. And there you have it your first flipped classroom exercise. Good luck and thanks for your attention.